<clears throat> All right, we are streaming. How's it going, everybody? Ecom Tom here. What's up, guys? Jason here with Tom. We haven't done a live in a while, and we wanted to come on. We spent about four hours today trying to set up our other studio, and we just could not get the audio to work. So we're back in my room, Epic and I, we promise it will be actually in the studio tomorrow. Or next time, I mean. So before we get started into talking about Amazon, Amazon drop shipping, this is just going to be a live about pretty much anything. So, you know, we wanted to say that we did launch our Amazon course on officially 10 days ago, right? On yep. the 15th. Yep. And if you guys are interested and you don't want to invest all the money right up front, we did actually make it. So it's not a free mini course, but you get access to the first 10 videos inside of the course for $1. $1. And that's $1. what, a seven-day trial? Seven-day trial for one buck. You can't go wrong with that. It's a little taster for you guys just to... You know, see what it's all about, and if you like it, you can sign up for our uh, full course with a coupon. See kind of how the coaching goes, how how our style is, if it fits with you guys, and everything like that. So, if you guys have any questions right off the bat, um, please just ask them. Like I said, we've been focusing a lot on Amazon. Your store has been growing a lot, right? Yep. But my eBay store as well. I, I haven't been listing that much on eBay, and it just hit. One of them just hit. 52,000 or 53,000 last 30 days so that's climbing up and I'm really not doing much it is quarter four though so you can't expect more things to be selling no matter what right yeah. off the bat so yeah. I mean have your sales been going up yeah I mean it's been steadily going up all fall and I feel like in January December January that's really when you're gonna hit your peak sales and um, that's right where you want to be Going into the holiday season, we got Thanksgiving. We got actually we got uh, October thirty first Halloween. Halloween. So and then, you, no, then November first, which is my birthday, and then <laughs> and then we got Thanksgiving. We got uh, New Year's. We got Christmas. We got all the holidays coming in through the winter. So sales are just gonna come uh, pouring in, flooding in, and hopefully you guys are selling on Amazon and eBay as well to capitalize on those sales. And in this episode, also we were gonna. Do a little show and tell. I brought some items actually from my back room there. And um, I want to show you guys some niche products that I'm actually selling on Amazon and eBay. And show you some things to kind of look out for. And what are some of the features that people, customers tend to look for. And what you can do to kind of distinguish your listings from everybody else when selling on Amazon or eBay. So, yeah, I mean, who? first off, before we get into it, who is here right now? Please leave a comment where you're from and where you are with your Amazon slash eBay dropshipping career. And we will get into the, the some of the comments that we have right now. we got Lazy Abram, who is on every single live. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Ecom, Ecom Tomcat, Tomcat yeah. in the house. Thank you very much for showing up again, man. I hope you I, – I don't know if you bought the Amazon course, but if so, I hope you enjoy it. Jameson Griffith says, hey, Tom, how was the move? I mean, Jason's here too. He moved as well. Uh, it went pretty well. I mean, that was two months ago, so it, it we've settled in, but we've kind of – I traveled for the first two weeks right after we came, we got home. Then Jason You're going was just to gone. Soon I'm too, going to right? Scotland, Scotland. Uh, next week confused. or next week and a half. Yeah. So that's going to be fun as well. That'll be another two weeks or a week and a half. So. Let us know where you guys are from. We know we have a lot of international people. Let us know where you're at with your own stores, and we're going to get right into this. So we got Sengis. I don't know. I, I butchered that one. I'm sorry. Uh, from Brazil. So. Yeah, so I mean, we're going to talk about what are some of the best items to drop ship on Amazon. And one of the first things I always say or we teach throughout the course or anything that is on YouTube, anywhere that we teach, especially even with eBay as well, it's to just really differentiate yourself from what everybody else is doing. And I feel like no other people out there on YouTube really talk about trying to differentiate yourself. Everybody wants to feed you the easy content because that's what a lot of people want. But the Amazon onto eBay, that's been dead for a year. So if you're still doing that, just, I mean, that's, <laughs> you're lost. You're at a loss right now. That's It doesn't really work very well. You could probably still do it with some manual software, but it's not worthwhile. We've been teaching to move on to other suppliers. Walmart, I mean, we I don't use Walmart anymore. We phased that out a while ago. Home Depot, I never I even used. I think they're coming down harder on people using Walmart, It seems honestly. that way it as well. It seems that way. We've had some people contact us and say that their accounts on eBay have gotten flagged from dropshipping. Walmart, predominantly Walmart items, and whether or not it's true, uh, whether or not there's more to the story, I'm not really sure. I haven't been engaging in you know Walmart to eBay arbitrage in quite a while, so if you guys are seeing anything like that, or Home Depot, or any of the major retailers, if your accounts are getting flagged from that, let us know, but we have heard a little bit more of, of that in the last couple months, I'd say. But it does seem also that, I mean, there are a ton of people out there that are doing it, and it seems like some people are successful, so... 
I mean, I, you can't be 100% for certain, but if they were to crack down on another supplier, at least eBay-wise and Amazon, it would definitely be Walmart, in my opinion. Yeah. So throughout the whole Amazon course, we don't teach Walmart at all. I, I do mention it. I do show you how to get tax exempt because I know people will do it. And uh, But besides that, I don't condone it. So what what are the types of items that we've been selling a lot recently? We we aren't really in the same niche, but kind of the kind of the same general idea. And one thing we actually both realized the other day on Amazon is that this is one of the only categories out there that isn't 15% fees. We actually get only 12% fees in this category. We didn't even know that. Uh, it was while we were making the course we yeah. found that out. And that's industrial and scientific. Yeah, and on eBay, it's, it's usually like and business industrial. and industrial. So they're basically the same thing. That's actually a pretty big deal if you think about it. 3% going down from you know, getting final value fee or a referral fee of 15% on Amazon down to 12%. That's 3% difference. And that's going to make a lot of difference if you're doing a lot of volume or if you're making a, you know higher priced items, getting them to sell. So you're going to end up making a lot more money. So I actually went through my profit sheet and it was literally the difference between thousands of dollars between those 3%. So well, if you do 100,000 a month, I mean, not saying that any of my accounts are doing 100,000 a month right now, but you're gonna be, that's $3,000 that you didn't even calculate for. So yeah. it, it's pretty wild. And I mean, as my newer, as my Amazon account starts to grow again, I did take a little uh, just siesta on the account while we were making the course. So I could then focus on the course and then build it back up. I didn't want any, I don't take any risks. I don't take any risks with the Amazon account. Yeah. But I'm building it back up and everything's, you know, it's going well. My average margin right now is 28%, I believe. So that's that's, wild. that's pretty that's wild, awesome. and we've we've done about thirty thousand in sales this month. And the so. thing too about industrial and scientific on Amazon is not only do we have less fees taken out from Amazon, but it's also a very popular um, niche. It's a well, it's a category, so there's a lot of sub niches within it. But we've seen a lot of our items sell really well, and a lot there's a lot less competition than yeah. things like electronics and clothes, house, uh, you know, home and garden stuff like that. And um, that's one of the things that I've really enjoyed about selling in this um, category is not only the less fee, but also the fact that I don't have to deal with competing with everybody on these items. And that's really making it so that I can push up my price and get bigger margins too. So one of the biggest things that I personally realized about it was when I was doing, this was spe specifically when I was doing eBay or Amazon onto eBay. And there was just a ton of, you're just selling anything, anything under the sun, toys, games, any like just household goods and a lot of people think that because Amazon made people think this that returns are free everything's just fine to just return get, get rid of didn't like it please give me another one yeah. broken just they just want everything for free they think shipping's free magically free and <laughs> like nothing costs anything on the internet and there's always returns and eBay is actually penalizing returns. They've been doing so for a year that if you get too many returns in a specific category, then your fees go up a, a 5%, 5% now. So I wanted to minimize returns and sure you can sell things that aren't breakable and sell things like that. But some of these categories are just highly prone to returns no matter what. And nobody I've realized in the business and industrial niche is going to return an item because they didn't they didn't mean to buy it and yeah. they accidentally bought it. You don't accidentally buy a cotton candy machine. You don't accidentally buy things like cleaning chemicals. Yeah. You don't accidentally buy things like that. You you purposely go out there and you buy the item because you need it. And they're businesses. Primarily they're businesses. And on Amazon, one of the things that's pretty cool is you can actually see when somebody's a business customer. This is a little tag and it's a different color. Yeah. And you can see it on the order level. And I see almost 30% that are actual business customers. Moreover, there's other people on Amazon that are buying for their businesses, for their companies. They're the purchasing manager. And usually you can tell if they're a purchasing manager because it will have, you know, in the address, it'll say STE, which is suite number, or it'll say something along the lines of attention, A-T-T-N, and then it'll be attention to the logistics manager, whoever's receiving the products in the warehouse. And I see over 40% of my customers are actual businesses. And these are people that are buying the products and they need the products and they're not going to deal with refunds. They need the products right then and there. They have the money. There's no issues. It's not like, you know, I don't want to say this, but it's true. It's not like your typical, um, you know, your mom buying something. And Every single drinking, size of a t-shirt. She's and drinking wine on a Friday night and buys out everything on Amazon <laughs> and then returns it all the next day. Right. Yeah. So 
That's that's another real. I've heard big of a pro. lot of people buying every single or like of three different sizes of something, finding the one that fits perfectly, and then sending it back. It kind of makes sense. <laughs> I would does. do the same thing yeah. too, but as the seller on the other side of it's that, it just fun. Yeah. it's a pain to deal with. Yeah. So we before, got a bunch of comments. Do you want to start? Well, I was going to say we should get into the show and tell, but before we do get into the show and tell, we got 62 people watching right now. If you could, please just smash the like button. Give us a thumbs up. Let's get this out to everybody that's what, that's selling Walmart onto eBay still. Get them to you know think outside of the box. There's a lot of suppliers out there. You can find your own. Jason doesn't even use suppliers that really integrate with SKU Grid or anything like that. He likes to just go out on his own rogue journeys. I like to keep the things that are mainly on SKU Grid and uh, Web Scraper app mainly. So that's that's pretty Each much. Each one's what I'm got doing. its pros and cons, guys. But the point is, is that they if you take the path that's less traveled, there's a lot better margins, there's a lot less competition, and overall, it's just going to be a better customer experience, and everything's going to work out a lot more smooth. We've been on the other side of it where we're doing hundreds of orders a day, Amazon to eBay. We've moved past that, and things, honestly, as a dropshipper, life is a lot better to do it this way, in my opinion. Did we, we also, change color on the screen? Could be. <laughs> we have a lot of sun coming in there. Um, we have a ton of comments, so we're going to start answering some of your comments, and we'll catch up, and then we'll do some uh, show and tell. Okay, with you okay. We'll answer the questions. Uh, we got... So, a lazy Abram says less than five point two for one dollar. I don't even know what less than five point two is, but I'm guessing the answer is no because I'm sure it's something important. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure what I it don't is know though. Where I don't. 5 .2 I don't remember. Is. I spent too much time so inside that course. So we got Catonia Toby says hi from Jacksonville, Florida. How's it going down there? Well, Jameson Griffith says, are you running a special on your VA course? Uh, not really. I, we don't run a special on our VA course. All right, answer to these questions. I gotta I go got change you. the lighting. Tom's gonna change up the lighting for you guys because I look purple with my shirt and it's blue. Uh, Jeff Radford says, I have been doing well on eBay, but I want to move to Amazon. Isn't it against their terms though? Oh, what yeah. are, what are the chances I get banned? Tom, I'm going to let you answer that question because we right. get this question every day. So in the terms, it does say, if you just look it up, I mean, you, you can just easily Google it yourself, but it does say that you can't be drop shipping items that have the supplier's logo on it, a, an invoice from the supplier inside, stuff like that. So we get asked this question all the time. First off, if you're using some of the suppliers that we talk about or we suggest, like the business and industrial type niche, a lot of them aren't going to have that. And a lot of them don't put the invoice in there, won't have a branded box, all that stuff. But if you do decide to go with the Walmart and everything like that route, you're just going to have to have good customer service. Very rarely do people know what the hell is happening. And eventually, when you do have like the 1 in 500 or 1 in 1,000 people thousand. that are going to go out there and you know complain about it, if you have good customer service, if you just offer them, you know, the, the difference, offer them more than the difference. Partial refund. I, yeah. Just offer them more than the difference. They're going to be happy that they got it for cheaper than, yeah. you know, they would have on at Walmart. Even though they, they never even knew it was at Walmart until you sent it to them. Most of the time, the situation could be actually mitigated through messages, okay? Mm -hmm. So one of the things, when this does happen, on a rare occasion, like Tom said, it's usually one in 1,000. Um an easy way to get around this is to tell a customer that you use uh, smart logistics or multi-channel fulfillment. So that's if your customer on eBay gets an Amazon, you know, an Amazon Prime logo or a Walmart box, you just say, hey, I actually leverage Amazon's fulfillment centers to send out my packages. Now that can be done on multiple levels with many fulfillment centers across different suppliers. So I just say multi-channel e-commerce and the customer usually has no idea what that means and they stop asking questions. Honestly, it works really well. I've also said that I have it I had it in inventory but I ran out due to like a miscalculation yeah and in order to not cancel your order then just you know I sent it from Walmart and, and the last thing I want to say about that too is I actually have one of my best suppliers and they actually do brand their boxes with their own tape and put their own invoice in there with their name their company name so it's not blind drop shipping but um, you know, it doesn't really affect anything. Nobody yeah. really asks. It's very, very, very rarely asked, if ever. You know what I yeah. mean? I the, barely ever ask. Have that question asked to me. The only issue I've ever seen was if that if you leave the customer's phone number on the order and it's freight delivery, and they call you up and they go, "Oh, I have your order or your delivery from whatever website," but that's why I put my number on the order. Yeah. They call me and then I tell them not to say it when Decrease they call the a customer. Confusion, yeah. 
But so, uh, so we're right here. So four eyed hustlers from Seattle, Washington. Not too too far away. Kind of far away though. Um, and Jeff Radford says, "Love your stuff, by the way, Tom. Thank you very much. Hope that answer helped you out. Jim. Yeah, we hope that helped you. Um, Catonia, do I don't I don't get that comment. So we're gonna move on to the next one. Jameson Griffith, have you seen the new spot and paste update for Auto DS? I actually did click on it. The video that Paul did today or yesterday, and it's not just for Auto Auto DS. I actually did test that that um." The new update the other like probably a month ago and it's pretty cool it's called spot and center and basically it's it connects with skew grid it connects with everything does your cash back and stuff it's really it's really interesting i haven't implemented it 100 percent yet it's just another thing on the back burner i got so many things going on and but it's definitely very interesting and i did like i did like the idea and the premise of it where you can just click the one item or click the link in eBay and it'll take you right to the item. It doesn't have to be on AutoDS. But... Let's do a little poll right now. How many of you guys are still using, or how many of you guys are using AutoDS? How many of you guys are using SkewGrid? Just go ahead and type that. I kind of want to gauge because it seems like those two are the most fierce rivals as far as repricing At the software moment, goes. Yeah. yeah. But Webseller Guru just came out with something they said. Webseller Guru. I haven't used them in like two years. Honestly, yeah. I forget how they even use their software. <laughs> yeah. So um. James, that was Jameis's question. So we Katonia have, uh, just says that she just started on uh, dropshipping on eBay. So let us know if you have any questions about that. Oliver Bromby says, hi, how do you get sales on a brand new account on Amazon when you don't have the buy box and zero feedback? You're going to so want to get the buy box. Yeah, I was in that situation uh, July. I started a new Amazon account. And everybody kind of blows this thing out of proportion that you I have can't. a YouTube video that I just, I'm going to come out with on oh, it. I just right. made the I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. see you put that out, but, or I didn't even see that uploaded. But one of the things that I saw is that everybody has this misconception that if you have a brand new account, you can't get the buy box. That is not true. You should get this professional seller's account. You need That's that. Thirty nine ninety nine. People don't know that you can't get the buy box if you have just a regular Amazon seller account. You need to pay the forty dollars to actually be eligible to get the buy box. That and you can. So inside of the course, when I was making the course, I learned things about the buy box that I didn't know because I already had the professional seller account. I already had a lot of these things that I just did right off the bat, and I didn't realize were actually like a ne a necessity. So you need that. You can actually even go into your items and check to see if you're even eligible. You also need to be within 5% of the person in the buy box. So 5% on minus, price. Yeah, oh, plus, plus, yeah. It's mainly plus. Um, yeah. It's usually the lowest, but it's not always. You need to be within 5% of them. If not, then you won't be on it. Also, if you're listing on listings that Amazon are on, consider your chance of getting the buy box out the window. Goose and um, if there's Prime on it, you're probably not going to get the buy box unless yeah. you undercut by like over 20, lot, yeah. 20 something percent. Yeah, yeah. I don't even bother trying to compete with people that have Prime because Amazon's going to push them way higher and get give them the buy box most of the time unless you push your price way, way, way down. And I, I don't want to do that. I'd much rather just you know get myself in a position where I have a good chance to get the buy box as a merch you know merchant fulfilled. So but there is some apps out there where you can see if the items go in and out of Prime a lot if they do go in and out of prime there's a lot an opportunity then yeah. i do consider going on those listings just because there's that you know you don't never know when somebody's gonna pop out and then you're all of a sudden making 30 percent profit on this yeah. item so winston l murray the third says from ohio <laughs> that's and a brand new to drop shipping how's it going winston check out our facebook group we have a free facebook group called drop shipping university and tom's obviously tom's channel we get a lot of free content out there so if you're just getting started Definitely look into that. Um, Ecom Tomcat says, don't forget to like and smash the buttons. Smash the subscribe button. Also hit that bell notification, Tom. Hit the <laughs> bell notification. It's the only way you will get notified. Tom loves that one. <laughs> it's, a good, it's good. It's like 20% or 25% of the subscribers have hit that bell notification. That's, that's it's a good a good percentage. So Scott R <laughs> says, are you more profitable on eBay or Amazon? Uh, definitely Amazon. Amazon. Amazon, once you get it going, is going to be amazing but if you don't know what you're doing then it's definitely not the place to start because the fact that they you, they can come down on you so hard they can yeah. ban you within like three days of having your account open if you do something incorrectly like so they you, will like, we literally had a student the other day that just listed two items on the list that he's not supposed to list items from and then he now has to you know try to get his account back so you don't want that stuff to be happening to you you do want to be paying attention to everything but just drop shipping on eBay is going to prepare you for that more than anything else out there. So uh, Jeff Radford says, hey, I've been doing well on eBay. Is this the same question? 
Yeah, so he asked the same question twice. We answered your question. Javier said some one of us sounds like oh. a, another person. Did I scroll too it, far? Yeah, this oh, isn't I scrolled the way first too time. far. If he's talking about me, this is not the first time somebody said that I sound like the guy from Dude, Power. you sound like Bunt. I don't know who that who is. Who is Bunt, all right? I need to know who that is because yeah. the last guy that said that I sound like a character from the show Power, I looked it up and, and I actually listened to a clip on YouTube and I sounded nothing like him, so... <laughs> We're going to look this up afterwards, so make sure you tell us what Bunt is from, or if that's a movie or a I TV show. I think Bunt's show. a person no in the idea. e-commerce industry, actually. <laughs> I, he might be another dropshipper or something. I don't know. I don't pay attention to these so people. So B. Whitmer sa- says to Tom, how do you get started with the legal side of dropshipping, and should I get an EIN number if I'm 17, almost turning 18? Don't you need to be 18 to get one? I, I think you have to be 18. I, these are all things that like I, I don't know the complete when rules about. When I was about. 17, I was not dropshipping. I didn't even, I'd never heard of it at that point. Yeah, but. I I think you need to be 18 to get an EIN number. Um, I mean, honestly, if you're not doing a lot of volume or anything, you can definitely get away without having an LLC, but not, it doesn't really matter that much. I when mean, you first how far start. out are you from your 18th birthday? He's almost turning 18, so he's right well, there. He's... Ask, ask your mom and dad if they can get you an EIN number for your birthday, <laughs> your 18th birthday. My mom got me a new license for my birthday. Really? Nah, that's, that's what she said she was going to get me. She renewed my license. <laughs> So Amit uh, Malak says it would be very appreciated if you could take the time and explain to me how to calculate the total profit. For example, if I sell an item on eBay and buy it for $20 on Home Depot, how can I calculate the profit? So do you want to bring up a calculator? Or, or I mean, just not really because we don't have quick? anything set up to, to okay. do anything behind this. Um, pretty simple. Honestly, you're going to get hit with twelve around 12 point something percent fees, 12.05. You can say 13 to make it easier if you don't have an eBay account, but really if you set up your software most repricing softwares have it where you set up yourself to have a profit margin You want to know if you're in the United States You want to know your fees what your fees are then all you have to do is add them into your actual repricing software But if you want to back calculate you can take whatever number you want to sell it at multiply it by 0.88 and that's going to take out 12% fees. That's basically what you want. You can multiply it by 0.87. The mm-hmm. world's your oyster. Um, but then after that, you just subtract what you would pay for it. If that's a suitable profit for you, then that's a suitable profit for you. I could break down some algebra, but I don't think this is the time and the place to be doing so. And I could give you a hell of an Excel sheet, but that's so, also... So he's just saying, you know, 12% is the standard profit. Uh, sorry, the standard, standard fees. fee that you're going to pay, okay? But if you inverse that... You multiply it by 0.88 and that's going to give you the rough, you know, it's going to give you a rough floor estimate of what your threshold is for your desirable profit, okay? Rodrigo wants everything over here. This man wants us to not only say what industry we're selling in the business natural, but also the suppliers to look for. Wow. And I think you can find <laughs> the them on SkewGrid. Um, so he said, what suppliers should I look for when looking for the industrial category? By the way, love your course. Looking to get into getting a virtual assistant. Well, inside of the course, we do have some, but also there are a lot on uh, Granger. I'm not going to say just pertinent course material on the YouTube live at the moment, but um, you could message us after or just post it in the Facebook group. Man. So Jeff, we're going to move on to Jeff Radford. This is the third question. Hi, Tom. I am... He's asked the same question oh, three times. Jeff, this is the third question. <laughs> you keep confusing me on this. All right, Chirok, 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 is that how you spell that? Pronounce that one. I'm a brand. I am brand new to eBay and just tried to post my first item. And they say your request couldn't be processed because of a technical issue. Please try again. You need to connect your PayPal account to it. It probably not isn't connected. Yeah. That happens all the time. If you don't connect it properly, you need to scroll down to the first listing that you have, and it'll say PayPal email. And you need to put in the proper PayPal email address. I don't know why they do it. It makes no sense. Or just call eBay and they can probably figure it out for you. It looks like we got a lot of duplicates because we already did a meet uh, and it might, Whitmer. It might be messed there up. There could right be now. a YouTube mess up on this live chat. But if you guys are just sending the same questions over, we will get to them. So yeah. just don't hold your don't horses. Keep, don't All right, it's show it and tell there. time now, All right. Jason. All right, show and tell. Oh, we got right almost now. 80 people on right now. Thank you guys all for showing up. Give Jason a thumbs up for a show and tell. This is just like elementary school. <laughs> I'm pulling them off the table here, guys. Okay? All right, okay, okay. So we were talking about business and industrial earlier. And here we go. This is a this is a piece. These are parts, okay? This is a piece. It's basically a clamp. It's a special type of clamp that goes on to extracting equipment. How does it work? Well, you basically... Show them. Oh, my God. So you put this on around... I, I don't want to give the product away, okay? I don't want to give... This is a piece this, that goes though. around a column... Ooh. 
and you tighten it oh, up. Wait. It's a very specific type of piece. It's high 304 stainless steel. That's some okay. good stuff. This is something that you'd use in a chemical laboratory or a home laboratory. I probably shouldn't say that, but some people use these in labs. And it's one of these products that you have to have for a specific type of operation that you're going to be running in those labs. So I've had all types of labs reach out to me, ask if I can, you know, give them a quote for 10 pieces, 15 units, 20 units. And that is the type of, um, that is the type of transaction that will end up increasing your margins. Cause if I can send, you know, 10 of these to a customer or if they are a repeat customer, I can end up making some inc incredible. So what was margins. that one customer that bought that huge order off you that one time? That was a lab up in, it was an environmental science lab. All right, um, don't give too much away. In, We're just talking numbers. In Oregon, here. in Oregon. And they, uh, they kept coming back. They came back four times and kept spending over a thousand dollars. One of their orders was 5,700. So $5,700 I made over a thousand dollars dollars profit on that one sale or that yeah so they bought multiple units and i made over a thousand dollars on that one sale so that's the power of selling to other businesses especially because they need these things for specific types of tasks that they're trying to do in the lab okay this is another piece i call them parts they're parts they all have um specific numbers stamped on them and i don't want to give that away this is they call this a shower head and it's another specific part that would go along with the whole extracting equipment that I was telling you about earlier. It's pretty heavy. It's like probably two pounds. Great material. Great material. I like this one because I, my supplier actually sends it uh, via USPS. So I only spend a couple dollars for shipping and I make insane margins. I make over 40% profit margin on that one item. And then this is the last piece that I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to block. <laughs> I got some brand names on this piece. So I'm going to block it. And this is you have a gauge on the front and you have another very specific part that comes down here. And this is also part of that whole entire unit. And I sell these individually and I sell them in bundles. And these things sell like hotcakes. Hotcakes, literal Most hot people, cakes. you know, unless you are somebody who's in the field or the industry, you might not, you know, you probably won't know what these things are. So this is where it helps to kind of do your research, learn more about these niches, and then you can kind of, figure out what's going to sell well, what would make sense to sell on Amazon, because I have to sift through a lot of products that really wouldn't make sense to sell on Amazon. And these small pieces and replacement parts sell really well, um, both on Amazon and eBay. So oh God, I mean, those are just three uh, parts. If you guys know those parts, let, you know, I'll, I'll do a little guess game with you guys. If you guys I don't know sell what any parts, parts are, like that, let so. me know in the comments and I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. You don't Again, have to sell just parts like that. That's, I mean, that's one thing I want to let you guys know. You don't have to sell strictly metal stainless steel parts like Jason is. It's just a whole entire business industrial. Those are just three yeah. things that I had at, at my house, at my apartment right now. I, I sell a lot of chemicals as well. Um, you just have to deal with some hazmat restrictions. I have to pay a little bit more for a hazmat fee. And there's other things like signature confirmation where you know my buyer has to sign off on it. But the chemicals sell really well. I'm doing very, very well with chemicals in big vats. So like you know 55 gallon drums, but you got to sell it freight. I'm also doing well with one gallon and one quart. But uh, one quart uh, or, or five gallons, one quart, all these different you know, measurements and I can bundle them. I can pair them up with other types of chemicals that might go well with the project that a customer is using. So if you guys kind of do the research on the niche, you can figure these things out and add value, make new listings and figure out what people actually need for these types of things that they're doing at their workplace or at their home, in their garage, in their little makeshift laboratories, whatever. And that's kind of why I figured out it's that niche. So, that sounds sketch. What? At their home makeshift laboratory? laboratories. Yeah. So Motive Hits Breaking says, bad. well, we're done with show and tell, I guess. Jason only brought three pieces today. Maybe, I have more things. Maybe but... next time we'll bring more. Um, Motive <laughs> Hits says, automotive beauty tools are the best and tools are the best items to sell in 2019. Not bad. I Did don't, you get ungated in automotive? No, I haven't. Wait, I haven't spent okay. the time yet. It's just it's there's so much on my plate. It's it's just not there. <laughs> He's got too much on his too plate. much on my plate. Automotive, I have heard, is pretty good actually. I'm yeah. gonna look into that. So Javier says, how do you optimize your title listings on Amazon? Honestly, I personally, and I don't think we should get too much into this because we have a bajillion questions. I just realized I don't even make listings on Amazon. I just hop on other listings on Amazon. So I, I find ones that are already made and then I just hop on. I show them. how to do that in the course. And then and Jason teaches how to actually make a listing inside of the course. Optimized it, yeah. So does manual drop shipping helps? Yes. 
Yes, on eBay you need to be doing at least non API related drop shipping, and you won't yeah. you won't get uh, you know caught. So flagged, throttled, whatever you want to call it. Um, Javier says for Amazon for Amazon. Oh, that was about making listings. I so, use both. Oh, this is when you asked about SKU grid and AutoDS. Oh, damn, we're far away. Yeah, yeah. Um, I use both SKU grid. So items don't work on AutoDS. Some items don't work on AutoDS. Oh, okay, I mean AutoDS only has like six. Or like five, maybe only four U.S. related suppliers. That's the biggest issue about it. Might be easier to set up, which is not a good thing in my opinion. If 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 it's too easy to set up, everybody's gonna be doing it. So SKU Grid is definitely a little challenging to set up. I try to do my best inside of the course to, to set it all up and for you guys. And I'm I'm gonna be redoing it as I've become more and more of a SKU Grid expert over over time. So they're always making updates too. There's always changes. There's always new things you learn. It, it can do a bajillion things. It'll do whatever you want it to, as long as you are good enough at math and you know can are are okay with failing trying to set it up like five, six, seven times. So motive hits is that where we're at? Motive uh, hit yeah. says if you have no experience, just snipe other sellers' titles. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a pretty decent rule of thumb. Uh, Sports Guru says DS is lit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, David Cho says purely manual. Nice. Oh, this is when we were asking if it's manual. Yeah, yeah. 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 So um, we have M. Just the letter M says when buying products on Walmart and selling on Amazon. In what situation do you need tax exemption, and in what situation do you not need it? You're so, gonna always want it because if you're buying items on Walmart and you're paying tax, you're losing money. Yeah. Uh, if you're paying tax while purchasing any of your items, you're not doing it properly. I before I get started with any supplier out there nowadays, I make sure to get tax exempt with them beforehand. And then I go ahead, well, I make sure that I can find items first. Then I make sure I can get tax exempt. And then I start listing their items. I fully get tax exempt or almost fully at every single supplier before I even start. So that that's the way that you should be doing it. I mean, if you don't have all the paperwork that I have that I've had to curate over the last like like 14 months, it does take time. It, it does change a lot, but you can get started on it today and at least get the big states like California and Florida out of the way. There's literally, I owed California for sales tax the other day, $1,500. Wow. That, and that was in one quarter I did like, it was like, it was some unreal amount of sales yeah. to California where it, like they're clearly the largest state out there. I mean, you're going to be selling the most items, and if you're not tax exempt there, you're missing and then out. Florida, yeah. there's a bajillion people in yeah, Florida Texas too. Texas is a big one too. Guys, remember, we're resellers. As dropshippers, we're resellers. We should not be paying for sales and use tax on any of these items because we're not the end consumers. We're reselling it to the end consumer, okay? So always remember that. Some people kind of get confused or they get nervous. We're not evading taxes. We're doing it properly and we should not be getting charged sales tax and use tax from our suppliers because again, we're reselling it. Just like a, a church or a B Corp can get. Do any other suppliers? You're gonna be doing Amazon, Walmart, and Home Depot if you go out That's of the That's true, they or don't like, have many suppliers. They have like one other one. Skewgrid has an unreal amount of suppliers. I'm sure, and not all of them are good, let's be honest here, but there's, there's, there's still options. an endless amount of options. Yeah. And yeah. if you guys are inside of the course and you tell me and message me, hey, Let's get let's get the supplier up there. Then I, it's gonna, um, you know, I'm gonna get that supplier up there for you guys. Did the did the stream die? Oh no. Let back. us know if you guys can still see us. Yeah, okay, it it kind of died back. out for a second here. Okay. Um, the best skew grin testing auto DS. Give it hell. Uh, my account was stuck on 5k a month, and I brought it up to 11k within a month. That's awesome, Javier. Nice man. And I believe he said he was inside of the course, so that's even better. So, yo, greetings from Mexico, Jose Garcia. Oh, How there you doing, go. man? Uh, sports guru 11k on that on what profit um who's at 11k i think that he was talking about javier to somebody said else. that yeah yeah the chorus is badass i just got it thank you very much jose I, I appreciate the kind words we just keep freezing on our screen but i'm not sure if we're actually like going or not i'm just gonna keep reading it <laughs> um thanks for getting taxed we're gonna move down the to screen the froze here. now it's back yeah oh, it is i guess oh this is our internet sucking um, we should wire ourselves next time. All right, let's just keep reading because we seem to be back now. Um, the course is bad. So I just got it. How do you guys deal with slow shipping from obscure suppliers like some from China? Don't sell from China. How would you answer that question, Jason? Mm, I, I wouldn't do AliExpress or DHgate or any of those. It's just your customers are going to they're they're used to getting products fast. I mean, Amazon is the gold standard for getting products to people fast with their prime 
you know, there's no reason for somebody to have to wait three weeks, four weeks to get their product. I know they say that we can get it quicker to you on AliExpress or whatever. I wouldn't even bother dealing with it. They also have very, very cheap products. So like very shoddy products, very poorly made products. So, you know, you're going to have high rates of returns, high rates of complaints. And, you know, if you're selling on eBay, you're going to end up having your account and, you know, it's not worth dealing with those potential risks just to sell cheap products, you know, my two cents. I've never done it. I have imported before, but I've never done the drop shipping method or the drop, drop shipping model from China to the US. I don't think it's a good idea. You can still see us, let, let us know. All right, let's answer another question. What were you talking about? You, you I was agree? talking about um, AliExpress and DH Gate. All right, and so all we're that. back. We got 82 people watching right now. All right. Technical difficulties. Did you answer? Which one did you answer? How do you? Okay, so I just started drop shipping on eBay instead of Amazon, and I have a few listings. My main goal is to get my first sale. What is the absolute best tip for that first sale? Just start listing more, lower your price a bit, except a little bit lower of a profit margin while you're first starting. You'll get your first sale, and then get your second sale hopefully right after that. So I'm. Uh, where else are we? Let's get a question that you can go off on a tangent on while I try to do technical support here. <laughs> How long have you been drop shipping? Um, what's a good number that I should be posting daily without an assistant? You should answer that one. How, what's the what? I didn't even. It's hear a good the number of items to be posting, posting daily, daily without, without a virtual assistant. assistant. I mean, I I really like to automate processes, and virtual assistants are perfect for that. So there's so many tasks when running an eBay drop shipping or Amazon drop shipping or Shopify drop shipping store for that matter, where you're going to have these processes that come in every single day, whether it's customer service, whether it's repricing or keeping an eye out for repricing, listing items. There's so many from top to bottom that um, you guys are gonna have to deal with. And if you wanna remove yourself and focus on the things that are most important with your business, which is scaling and growing your business or spending time doing things that you actually enjoy, you have to remove yourself from that aspect of the business. And virtual assistants are kind of the only way that you're gonna be able to fully do that. I know Tom's kind of got his stores automated from head to toe. I'm a little bit more involved in my stores at the moment. There are certain times and places where it makes sense for you to be involved. And when you're first starting out, I think that it's a good idea for you to learn the necessary things, the necessary strategies, the techniques, because it makes it easier to teach somebody else. And once you become you know, proficient with these techniques and strategies, you can then go and teach somebody else what they need to do because just you know, going out and hiring a virtual assistant on onlinejobs.ph or Upwork, you don't necessarily know, you know, everybody's got a resume that looks impressive. They've said that they're proficient with all of these different software, um, you know, repricing softwares. They're proficient with all these different things. And in reality, they're just making their resume seem like it's better than it is. In reality, you're going to have to learn the things that you want to teach them first. And then once you understand those things fully, then you can transfer that over. Uh, I like to do it through zoom. I, I record my screen with zoom and then I send them video files, which are training files. And then they learn how, what my rationale, what my thought process is and how to actually go about executing these tasks that I give them. So I would say generally in the beginning, you're going to want to keep it, you know, keep it in house, figure out everything yourself and then transition into moving it and delegating it to somebody else. And, uh, you know, eventually you can have a whole team of virtual assistants and it's going to be one of those things that's going to help you grow your business over time and really help you, you know, and some people like to take the time out and go do things like travel and be with their family. Ride four wheelers on a Wednesday. Have fun. Yeah. We were just actually at this place called Moon Rocks. It's like the desert out here <clears> and we were riding around a four wheeler. is a good time, but normally you can't do that on a corporate job, right? A nine to five job. How are you going to be able to get out of your job on a Wednesday afternoon, go ride a four wheeler, go spend time with your family. You can't do that. So, you know, having virtual assistants and systems and processes in place to enable you to do those things is where you want to eventually get. And, you know, it was a hard struggle to get to this point, but that's what your ultimate goal is, or at least that's what our ultimate goal was. All right, you went Are off. Are we on still that. having no, technical no, we, difficulties? No, no, we haven't had technical here. difficulties. For that a while. was my long. That going. was my long tangent. Sorry. Uh, like, <laughs> geez. All right. Um, Javier says, "Do you have an Amazon dropshipping course?" Yes. Um, we did announce at the beginning of this live that in the, in the description we do have the link to the course and the link to the course to get the first ten videos for a dollar as a sort of seven day trial. I almost always say free trial, but it's one dollar trial. 
So the the link will go to the same landing page you can either buy the course there or you can sign up for the trial first and test it out so we do have one yeah. launched yeah. 10 days ago we're getting some pretty good feedback about it so i can't wait to start seeing a lot of students successes start rolling out so we can show you guys one dollar exactly guys. what do you have to lose one buck and that gives you a taster of like over an hour of content. You get to listen to me talk. You get to listen to Tom talk. Sultry voice since both of them. <laughs> we had 82 people on, and now we only have 60 because of our neighbor. Yeah, we um, got a rogue neighbor. <laughs> so David Cho says, uh, do you guys use Home Depot? No. Um, where you hit with the new policy change of each item, item having to be $45 each. Honestly, that policy change had to have been like eight months ago, I think. I, I, it was not new, I don't believe. Of each item having to be $45 each if you're sending to multiple addresses. No, I, I don't think that that's a new policy change. But no, we don't drop ship from Home Depot, and we highly suggest trying to go out and finding more obscure suppliers because it's a very common, saturated supplier that everybody's using nowadays. Yeah, we're going to go rapid fire through some of these comments. Tom's like Bunt. Jeff Bunt. Okay, Jeff Bunt. You know I'll who that is? I've heard his name on Instagram. I'll, oh. I'll look him up. You know, oh, give he's him a an e-commerce guru. You're yeah, right. You're yeah. right. We'll look him up after. <laughs> Do you need v more VAs to work on your Amazon stores versus eBay? Honestly, I have less people on my Amazon store because yeah. it's just so easy to find items and make money. You don't need le I, You have way less items and everything's just doing a lot better. And you don't have to consistently list on Amazon. Yeah. And you don't need to create the listings if you're just hopping on the listings. So it's just really just finding items to hop on, having all the spreadsheets set up properly, and then just, just uploading them. It's really Making consistent sales on Amazon is not going to be yeah. your problem. We get this question all the time on Facebook. People say, oh, you know, eBay is really hard to sell on. I'm constantly listing new products, constantly differentiating myself, and that's true. But on Amazon, if you get that buy box on a popular product, uh, you're going to be selling the hell out of it. And that's one of those things that on Amazon is a huge advantage, okay? So don't worry about making sales on Amazon. Honestly, it could be more of a danger of making too many sales and not knowing what you're doing on Amazon than it is not getting enough sales. It's never been a problem getting enough sales on Amazon. Yeah, it's not, that's not If you issue. build it, they will come and it's true. So B. Whitmer says, does tax jar calculate all the taxes on the legal side? No, it only does sales tax for you that I know of. It might have more extensions or programs or something, but I believe it's only uh, just sales tax that it does. And pretty much it, it's just, it's just going to tell you what you need to pay each state. I used it the other day. Uh, hopefully I can outsource this to somebody because I hate doing it. Yeah. And then secondly, I said, if you get a 1099 and incorrectly pay taxes, can you get arrested? I mean, I that's like a worst case Ontario. Uh, I'm, I'm not, not really. Don't even answer I don't, that. I don't, don't answer that. Like, uh, I don't think they're going to just come straight to your door and put you in cuffs. You should. <laughs> there might be a few warning signs first. Okay. So Shavaz says, please tell me how to start my first day in first listing, which can get, can get me a bomb all right. profit. Yeah, it's going to come. Profit. The video is coming out on Monday. I just literally made that video. Stay tuned. So stay tuned for that. Dennis says, if you aren't, aren't you afraid your stealth account will get, stealth accounts will get discovered? Jason's the only one. Not if you know one. what you're doing. And I mean, I'm not an IT professional, but I did my diligence and, you know, I looked into this and I read a book that's written by somebody who actually knows what the hell they're talking about called Amazon Ghost. And I, I made sure that it all checked out and made sense. And I looked into this. So no, I've been going strong for a couple months since July. So that's what, four months? No issues. I'm not worried. I can wake up in the morning and hope that it's not going to it's not gonna uh, get suspended. So um, yeah, I'm not really worried about it. Nope. So Jasper Fam says, how do you guys find products to list? Sniping, spidering through brands, or using applications like Web Scraper app? Um, kind of all of the above. I don't really use any, like, just um, the web scraper app has Velo Crawler. I don't really use that. Um, I kind of just find the suppliers that I like, find their brands, and then have my VAs just go through and, like, pillage somebody's store. <laughs> and then I just, like, overtake other people's stores, really. I feel like I am probably piss people off, but I don't undercut, so... Yeah, it, that that saves me. So Jasper also said I recently started drop shipping on Amazon and have been trouble had trouble finding items to list. And I, I wouldn't say that's um, one of the things that we've seen. I mean, you just need to find the right trouble. supplier. We have 15 suppliers inside of the course. It, it's it's just all about finding the right supplier where you know their private label brands and yeah. you can easily spider through people's stores and just pretty much just wreck them. Um, Jasper, I mean, if you I don't know if you're a course member. I don't think you are. 
If you have any questions about the course, let us know because all of that stuff will be illustrated for you, demonstrated for you inside of Tom's computer. He goes over it so thoroughly and teaches you exactly those steps. You know, just being on a live right here and saying how to do it is not the same as actually seeing it in person and figuring these things out. I'm a very visual learning learner, so those things, that's kind of how I learn is by seeing somebody else do it. And I think if you have any questions about it, just let us know and we'll try to help you out. Um, so, so Lala Boy 321 that's a good username, says, Hi, Tom, I'm a beginner who started at the beginning of this why month. Why does nobody ever say hi, Jason? I, I don't know. Nobody loves me. This is me. upsetting. <laughs> I, I received a ban restricting me from selling on eBay after making my first listings without any sales. Can I just make a Call new them. This happens all the time. I don't... I, how long ago did this happen? I, you, I called them right away. It's happened to me once on, on one account. If you just call them and say, they're literally just trying to verify that you are who you are. That's it. So as long as you don't lie about who you are, as long as you're allowed to sell, you should be fine. All mm -hmm. you need to do is call them. Are you guys doing bookkeeping yourselves? Any software or suggestions? Um, Jason's really big on his QuickBooks. I'm really big on letting my CPA deal with it all at the end of the year. Um, <laughs> QuickBooks is awesome, honestly. But I do definitely have QuickBooks. I just definitely don't utilize it the way I should be using it. I feel it. bad for our CPA because Tom just gives her so many transactions to go over. I it's feel way bad less for this it. year. It's I mean, last year was just wild. <laughs> Um, where are we? You got banned for just, yeah. He's talking to Lala Boy. So. About my profit calcul. Oh my, okay. You said 13% on eBay, but what about Amazon, Home Depot, or Walmart fees? What? What are you talking, if you're buying the item, I mean, yes, if you have tax and you're going to have to, uh, just, you know, add in tax, but you can't really figure that out. It's more of an average. I'd say add an extra 7% average for the tax. And I guess that would be a break even of 20. Is that what you have here? Can you explain a bit more about this? I mean, if you're not tax exempt, then you're going to be paying tax at whatever your supplier is. Um, so then you're going to have to add that into your calculation to overcome that. But tax is variable from state to state. So it was seven, seven and a half, eight percent. That should cover you. So we got the question of what are our best suppliers and websites to get good stuff from. I'm not obviously I'm not going to answer that. We All talked about them. this earlier. If you're looking for some suppliers, Skewgird has a massive list of suppliers, and that's going to be your best bet. Go do some research and uh, go from there. So we kind of already answered this question. Should I let? Uh, should I just? Should I look to just get a team of virtual assistants to run everything while beginning my store? I work a lot, so no. I mean, you should learn everything yourself. But as long as you know what is going on and you can teach it properly, then yeah. you're good. You're good to just pass it off to a VA. That I was got my VAs. Yeah, I got VAs before I even started, but I really had no clue what I was doing. So I'd at least suggest you you know what you're doing. So uh, um, somebody said homebrew. homebrew. That's a good. That's homebrew a good guess. Is a good guess. That, that Honestly, was pretty much pretty close. I could, actually do have a supplier for homebrew. If you guys are interested, let me know. Um, I, I'll actually give them away live because I don't use them as much anymore. So if you're if you're actually interested in the homebrew niche, let me know and I'll I'll drop it live. So what's the fastest way to get tax exempt in every state? Uh, fill out the multi jurisdiction form and then just start plugging away at individual states. It's it's not fast and it's not fun. Yeah. Um, any discount on the course? Um, message us. I guess we can see what what type of discount you're looking for. It's not going to be a large one. Um, please tell me how to start my first day. First, uh, we answered that. What's your profit margins on five to ten k per month? What? What's? I, oh, in sales. He's talking about gross sales. If I was five making 10, that, 000. yeah. Um, it depends on what. If it's eBay, I mean, eBay is like ten percent, but Amazon's like twenty eight, almost thirty percent. So yeah. it really depends on what the platform is. Yeah. Yeah. Walter White Home Labs. Yeah, I was talking about that earlier. Please tell me how we start. Oh, we've literally seen the same comment. There's At a... Home Laboratory by Heisenberg. What? What? No, 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 no. It was not by Heisenberg. Heisen... But... Heisenberg is literally the character of Breaking Bad, Jason. Heisenberg. Is the character in Breaking oh, Bad. I... See, make... I never even watched to make Breaking Matt. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> you're not very cultured what do you guys use SkewGrid for exactly SkewGrid tracks your items whatever platform i use SkewGrid on amazon and on ebay tracks your items lets you know if they're in and out of stock or lets the whatever platform you're selling on know if they're in and out of stock and also will do any repricing or pricing changes and uh that, that's pretty much it i it, thought philip smith was asking me if i had some type of operation like in you Breaking might yeah Bad. no i don't i don't cook up math <laughs> What is the info for the refund policy of the course? I'm uh, when I'm not gonna. If you're trying to ask the refund policy before you start the course, then I don't, we don't really want. It. Yeah, just, you're probably not gonna be dedicated. It's just not. It's not worthwhile, honestly. Cut your losses. 
Uh, <laughs> what is the way for you guys to go about? Okay. John do, Arducey's here. Oh, John, how's it going, man? Uh, do you need some, some Ethernet, Ethernet cables? cables? We have Ethernet cables. We it's forgot to. <laughs> it's it's we didn't set it up because we were supposed to be in the other room and then that didn't work. How Technical. long does it take to get tax sent from Home Depot? If you have everything, um, I the video inside of the eBay course I made was eight minutes long, so uh, it's probably like twenty minutes because I paused a lot and filled out stuff. I'd say twenty minutes if you know what you're doing and if you have somebody to 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 kind of teach you. All right, you guys stuck in your ways. Yeah, we're st- we got. St- oh, we got we got, stuck, got yeah. stuck. All right, so uh-huh. we're we're catching up from like fifteen minutes ago. Bear with us. Costway. We're gonna get through these. Guys. Do you use Costway for Amazon? I've looked into it. I don't use them. Um, I have never done drop shipping. Can I start with Amazon? Uh, and I, I, sure. I don't know what that question really means. Can you start on Amazon? Can you start using Amazon as a supplier? Uh, you're gonna have to elaborate a bit more on that. Um, we started at the beginning of the month. I've received a ban. We, we answered this one. I understand you just hop on, where is that? Hop on listings, but do you ever create, okay, answer that one. Cause we're, I'm getting blind over here again. Tom's getting blinded by the light. Um, yeah. So Tom was saying earlier that the part in the course, it's actually in like the sec- second unit of the course. He talks all about hopping on listings. That's kind of what he specializes in. That's his strategy. I go more in advanced units. I talk about actually creating your own unique native listing on Amazon and creating bundled listings. Uh, Some people call it bundle pairing. And I also talk about making child variants on Amazon. And those are brand new listings and I go over that in depth. That's something that I have a lot more experience on. So I talk about that in depth in the course. Um, Okay, so do you drop ship on Amazon from Etsy? Um, I don't. No, you. I did look into it because somebody asked that on a different uh, live. You can use Etsy as a supplier from SKU Grid. I've never done it. I don't. I don't really think it's a great idea. But this it, question's kind of come up a couple yeah, times. Yeah, it can huh? be done. It's like, I mean, people probably think about it as like those are kind of individual niche suppliers yeah, type thing. But they're usually like one person or a very very small team of people. And if you start hitting some serious uh, volume on Amazon, you have to think down the line, can that person keep up with supply? And if your supply chain is just one person in their garage making you know, making some item whenever they feel like it, that's not really a great supplier to use. I like to have consistency with my suppliers and also know that if I scale, they can scale with me and offer me better rates and actually keep up with uh, demand. So I, I would steer away from Etsy personally. I do drop ship on Etsy on the platform, on the marketplace, and that's for a different time and a place. But yeah, I wouldn't use them as a supplier. Different personally. video. Different video. Um, Blood and Thunder says, oh, it's you that undercut me? Yeah, kind of. No, I mean, <laughs> I I actually, I match the person at the bottom. I'm not an undercutter. I just like to match the lowest price. That's it. It's a very common practice, and that's what I do. Um, when it comes to taxes, how do you go about getting them done? You need a CPA. I wouldn't go out and start plugging and chugging your numbers on your own. I mean, it's just, it's a lot, and you just got to hire somebody for that. Yeah. Seems like a newbie Q and A. I mean, there, it's it, it's a free que- question and answer. So, whoever wants to ask questions can ask questions. Yeah, I mean, we don't. We're probably gonna do some more specifically for our course students and make them a little bit more advanced. But you know, we haven't done a YouTube live in a bit, so we want to just engage everybody. And you know, th- this is an opportunity for people who might not have the means to join our course, ask questions about drop shipping, and that's what we're here for. So. Um, this is Lala boy was the one that got banned that I called them right away. I received a ban a few days prior for verification. So, I mean, you literally got banned and then you called, but you got banned before that. Then you got banned again. And then it was taken away after I verified. I mean, there must've been some issue with the verification there. I don't know if you've ever been banned in the past. If you ever had accounts in the past and you never paid your bills, yeah, that's one thing I've seen people kind of forget that they uh, just didn't do back in the, back in the day, not saying you did. Um, there's a whole host of different things that it's pretty hard to diagnose without knowing everything about it. At the end of the day, it. you should probably call them up and see what's going on. Right? Again, yeah. I mean, yeah. he did say that. He no, I mean, up. again, ask him what's going on. Says, yeah, the Home Depot policy change was months ago, but that was for two addresses, so you could combine two. Oh, I, I don't know anything about Home Depot, honestly. Um, I, I, I drop shipped three orders from them once. They pissed me off. <laughs> it took a month to get the items. I was pissed, and I never used them again. So 
I haven't heard much about Lowe's in a while. Everybody, yeah, whatever everybody happened used to Lowe's. be big on Lowe's I thought over Lowe's is the, the, the good last one. year, and everybody stopped talking about Lowe's. So I don't know what happened. Um, seems like it's uh, it's not the popular choice anymore. Yeah, I don't understand it. Um, <laughs> Mike D says, do I get a free course just for you, man? You're the only one to ask. Yeah, <laughs> I'll give it to you. Um, can you get around Amazon account bans by registering a new company every time the initial account gets banned? That's just an uphill battle. I don't know right why. There. why I, would you just do try that? to not get banned. That's um, your best bet. Your best bet is to try to not get banned. I, I, in the, you read the stealth book. I mean, yeah. there's more. You, they need to personally verify you, which is kind of an issue. I mean, you could just steal someone's identity. I uh, just beat someone up, steal their ID or something like Go that. Go on the black web. Go dark on the web. dark web. But I mean, I would just try to not get banned. I yeah. would say that that's the best option. Uh, but you know, use a, a loved one, a loved one's uh, information if they don't mind. It's it still gets. I mean, it's it's always hairy if you yeah, if you're not using your own information. Definitely. This is Scott R says, "How do I get tax exempt in California?" I think we're call done up with the, California's Department of Revenue. I think we should stop with the tax exemption stuff. Last now. live was like all about stealth accounts. This, this one's is all about all tax, tax exemption. exemption. Everybody <laughs> loves it. How do you handle item not received claims with Amazon, even if the tracking number shows delivered? Honestly, I don't get very many of those now that we've started selling in a more, I'd say, business oriented niche, which is another benefit of selling in the business and industrial. You're not getting these. I mean, I'd say less than just ideal situations were from people that probably are trying to scheme you or going out there to scheme you. These are businesses mainly buying items from us. So that's one thing. I don't get very many of them. I have gotten uh, A to Z claims, items not received back in the day when I was doing a lot of Walmart onto Amazon. But I, I won a couple of them that said that the item wasn't that was delivered. They said it wasn't. I won one or two of them just by putting in an appeal. I lost one. And then I told the supplier, which wasn't Walmart, that uh, that they never got it, well, even though they definitely clearly did. And then they refunded me. So it, it worked out. So if whatever your supplier is, I'd contact your supplier and be like, hey, never got the item and to see what your supplier says about yeah. it. So the, yeah, yeah. the real thing is, is that they're just going to take it and pass it off onto either the shipping company or some sort of insurance recuperation company. <laughs> and then, you know, it just... It's kind of everybody's happy in the yeah. situation. So, guys, you know, we got through the technical difficulties. If you're still watching, if you stuck through all the technical difficulties, yeah, we still got 68 people watching. Go ahead and hit that like button. We really appreciate Thank it. Thank you, guys. And we're going to try to finish up here in the next 10 minutes or so. I know we got delayed or whatever, so we're going to get through it. John C. Arducey says, I bulk dropped all my promoted listings from 4% to 1%. My sales skyrocketed the next day. Editing seems to cause sales even when it doesn't make sense. So it's an interesting, you know, it's an interesting uh, theory or an interesting observation. I would like to know what, what was your sample size, right? What was your sample set? How many listings did you do that for? Because that's actually really important. And the other thing is, you know, uh, you know, what, 4% to 1% and it, and it skyrocketed the next day. What happened after that? What were the subsequent days like? Th those are really important, you know, points of data that, that, you know, tell a story. And, and I don't know, I can't really extrapolate anything from that. So, yeah, I mean, there's so many different things and theories on eBay that I've kind of just stopped attempting yeah. <laughs> to figure out what works and what doesn't work. I just try to run little experiments on more uh, actual, you know, where, where you can take, like the last video I did where I took items off that had already, that hadn't sold before and some of them sold again. That's real tangible data you can get where if you just start changing settings and stuff, it, it's kind of just, I don't, I don't know. It's, 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 it's eBay. I don't know what to tell yeah, you about eBay's it. Yeah, eBay's crazy. It's, yeah. So one question here was, Latra Lee Travius McKay says, uh, is there a better way than payability? I, I don't use payability. I never have. Um, do you use just get an American Express card if you can. There's charge cards. They're called one's called the Plum Card. That's what I use, and they they grow with you. They don't care how much you're selling as long as you're doing well. So keep on keeping on. And it's not a credit card. It's they call it a charge card. It has a semi no limit. I don't know, but it's it's a lot better. It's based on your like balance, right? In some way, shape, or form. You can pay it off daily. Uh, it's it's basically a credit card. Yeah, it's, it's a credit way card higher with, limits. Yeah, I started off at limits. like fifty thousand. They're though. more for businesses, enterprise business stuff like that. It's not for your everyday average Joe who just has a couple hundred dollars in grocery bills. It's really for businesses. You got upgraded, right? So the, the I got platinum the platinum card. card and a I'm a baller, baller now. Man. I can go to the Centurion lounges in the airport and <laughs> sit there and 
eat free food and take I'm showers. Jealous. I'm jealous because I was at Denver International the other day and they actually built one of those Centurion lounges and I had to just walk by it because I didn't have one. Um, <laughs> starting with Amazon versus eBay, which to start with first, eBay. eBay's a lot easier, less people getting banned right off the start, or it's just easier to get set up and it, it's not as strict. Yeah. Which tools do you use for Amazon dropshipping? I have a whole video on that. We're trying to go through these questions really quickly. Just check my Amazon dropshipping playlist on uh, YouTube. Um, so I need to help. I need help to start my Amazon seller account. I'm doing dropshipping. I'm doing dropshipping. So he's an eBay dropshipper. I, I have an, to transition. I have an Amazon seller account video I made a week and a half ago. Check that out. It's on YouTube. What do you think is the best solution if Amazon asks for invoices? We went over um, that at the beginning of this. You're going to want to have sorry, some sorry. sort of supplier that sells items like what you're selling that could be a wholesale-related supplier. And, I, I mean, I got asked for an invoice once, and I literally went to Walmart, bought the item because it was a Walmart item, and then I sent in an, uh, a receipt of the Walmart item, and that worked, which was also explained on a YouTube video. So that's that. Um, other than that, just try to find something that knows exactly what they're doing. Like I haven't gotten banned from anything like this before. So I, I wouldn't say that everything that I, I know about it is the best, but we are getting contacts with people that are helping out uh, that can help out in situations like this. Yeah. So where are we? I'm late to this. Is there going to be a replay? There's it's always <laughs> a replay. It's YouTube. <laughs> yes. So check out this video after we finish. We're going to be done here in a couple minutes, so go ahead and check it out. We actually had some really good questions at the beginning, and we're just trying to finish up here. We have Dennis who asks, have you ever tried Banggood? I've never. I, th no. I think they're similar to AliExpress, right, with the whole Chinese stuff. Yeah, I've never done that. We were thinking about it at one point, but I think we've uh, definitively moved past that. Um, so Eddie has got a lot of question marks in his question. Uh, retail dropshipping is against Amazon's policy. Yes. Would you risk your account just dropshipping anyway using Lowe's, for example, or go down the route of finding a distributor? Amazon FBA, 30% profit, question mark, question mark, question mark. I'm using a, I guess, what would be considered retail distributor, and I'm making almost 30% profit. So... I, yes, I do do that. I guess I risk my account. So there, look at how many people are selling Lowe's. Although they did just, uh, Cobalt started cracking down on Amazon, which is one of Lowe's main brands. So I probably wouldn't try Lowe's. It seems like Lowe's has been, for lack of a better word, a shit show in the last uh, <laughs> two months. So yeah. I'm not sure anything about Lowe's at the current moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's yeah. going on with Skewgrid lately? Um, my Skewgrid's working. I, I'm not sure. And all right, we got the last two. I got banned from PayPal. What do I do? I how'd you get banned from PayPal? I'm not sure. Start using eBay managed payments. I yeah, mean, go they're to gonna, eBay they're gonna be transitioning this very soon. And you know, what do you have to I'm actually gonna be doing that. That's on my uh, bucket list for the end of twenty nineteen here is transition over to eBay managed payments, which means that you know we're getting PayPal out of the picture since they're splitting off. And PayPal is doing some things that are pretty annoying. Like, you know, they're not going to refund the 2.9%. Supposedly that already started. It started. I apparently. checked. It didn't, they, it didn't the, happen. The, the, the rep on the phone told me that it started on the 15th. It, I don't think it's actually started, but, you know. No, it, some people inside of the course did say that it's 2.9% 30 cent transaction fee. They're saying that they're not going to refund it. I have a lot of products that sell for over $100, sometimes over $500. That's going to add up, and it's really annoying. Um, so you're going to transition over to eBay managed payments eventually anyway. So do it now rather than later. You know, you don't need PayPal. It, we've moved past that. Yeah, um, we don't need it. We don't need you anymore, PayPal. We got a Canadian drop um, Being a Canadian dropshipper on Amazon, do you guys have any advice? Get Just get an American EIN number and then an LLC and you'll be like an American. And <laughs> it'll be great. Um, so, Adrian, what was the reason for PayPal banning you? Do uh, you guys tried... Last question from Dennis. Have you guys tried any Amazon international sites like Amazon UK? No, I haven't. You can make enough money on Amazon US, and it's just I, I, it's so much stuff to learn in other countries' rules, I feel, that I, I, I don't see myself running into it yeah. or jumping into it anytime soon. So if you guys stuck it out till the end, we appreciate it. I know there were some issues during this live, but you know, again, thank you so much for staying all the way to the end. Again, I'm gonna ask you for one last time, like that, hit Thumbs that like up. button, subscribe. But don't forget to subscribe because we hit over 10,000 10, and now the only logical thing to do is hit 100,000 soon, like immediately. So we need your help. 
Thank you guys very much. Please subscribe, hit the bell notification. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. They will be answered. And if you are interested in checking out the Amazon course that we did drop 10 days ago, you will see the trial. first 10 videos in the course for $1 for seven days. So it's $1 trial. Uh, it's definitely worthwhile. I'm sure you'll learn something. Or go that McDonald's and you'll hamburger literally, for one day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's you'll get it's it's one McDonald's hamburger worth of uh, <laughs> worth of information, but it's better. So, thank you guys very much, and we will see you in the next live. Take care.